I don't really know if this is good or bad news, but there are two more kits coming to The Sims 4 today. I say that because they release so many of these things and the frequency and the size of these kits can be kind of controversial, but I'm not really here to debate the existence of kits in general today. I just want to review these two kits and let you know whether or not I think they're worth buying. I never want you to waste your money, so I'm gonna show off every single thing that comes in both packs and then talk about what I like and what I don't like from each of them. Obviously, bear in mind that what I like, you might not care for, and what you love, I might not be all that interested in. Kits can be kind of niche, and they're not necessarily meant to appeal to everybody, which is why I want to give you the tools to see everything and then make that decision for yourself. And these two are actually fan-voted kits, because back in May of last year, they had us vote between two build kit concepts and two cast kit concepts. And as you can see, the community picked the medieval castle concept and the goth fashion concept. I'm really curious to find out if that small community involvement in these kits is gonna make them sell better, or if people will like generally enjoy them more because they maybe voted for it. But I don't really know, because that vote was so long ago and so simple, we just picked between two images. So I don't really think that anybody has any sort of special attachment here. They're kind of just like any other kit. If they had maybe given us some more inside info along the way with like some more concept art during the process or something, maybe we would care more. I'll tell you right now that I am really excited about the castle kit. I'm more of a builder, so usually the build stuff is more interesting to me. You might not know this, but I have a history degree, so this is like right up my alley. It's like my two favorite things, old stuff and Sims building combining. I'm not as interested in the goth galore kit just because I don't really care about fashion stuff. None of the cast kits are ever really a big deal to me. I don't know if this is right. I'm trying to search it on the EA app. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to buy them because they should have come out like five minutes ago, but um, we might have to wait a little bit longer. Okay, they are officially here in the game menu and you can buy them from the game menu too, or at least you should be able to buy them from the game menu. I don't know if it's gonna work, but at the very least we can now see them in game and then compare them to the size of the other kits. So the most recent kit was the Modern Lux kit. These are all of the items that it came with. In total, there are 38 items, although I would say it probably technically has less because there's two sizes of curtain and there's two sides of the curtain. So like all of these items maybe could count as like one compared to the castle estate kit, which actually only has 16 items in it. Um, when you look at it like that, it's, it's not so promising, but this is more of a build kit, like a build mode kit than a furniture kit. And the only other kit that is like remotely comparable in that way is the courtyard oasis kit. And this one obviously has more because it did come with some furnishing. We had like a couple tables, a couple plants, a couple lights, a couple chairs, and then most of it was just wall stuff. We had like the wallpapers, the flooring, the windows and the doors. And I find this kit kind of hard to use because it's got so little of both categories. There's like not enough windows to do a full house. There's not enough furniture to do a full house. You just have like kind of a little bit of each and it doesn't really go very far. So I'm hopeful that there's a more complete build set in this one, but it is also looking a lot more sad in game than I was expecting it to. So that's kind of alarming. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm seeing this and I'm like, oh dear, that's smaller than I thought. This goth galore kit has 24 cast items, which is pretty similar to a lot of the other ones. The most recent one, the poolside splash kit had 29. Before that, the grunge revival kit had 25. So it kind of depends. I will say this is a little bit less than I was expecting, especially since a couple of them are makeup items. And I feel like the makeup items items aren't as big of a deal as the clothing. So I'd want to see like 25 clothing assets plus the makeup for like 28 items, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just being picky, but I always want to see more out of these things. And both right now I'm kind of like, oh man, <laughs> that's smaller than I was expecting. I also can't buy them. It doesn't work. So <laughs> we're kind of stuck here. Well, while I sit here and try reloading to see if that works, now is a good time to tell you that I am going to be live on my Twitch channel playing with the castle kit later today. We play The Sims pretty much every day over on Twitch and I should have a couple of giveaway codes, assuming that The Sims sends me my codes in time, <laughs> but we should have giveaway codes for today. Okay, well, seems like nothing's happening on time. 
but I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully I'll have giveaway codes for each of these packs, but either way, I'll be there playing the game and billing with it. I'm actually having better luck buying these on the EA website. I don't know if creator codes work on the website, but I'm gonna test it because I get 5% of the purchase if I use my creator code. You do not have to use my creator code, but if you wanted to, it's just Lil Simsy. I'm not trying to sit here and like force you to buy the pack or to use it, but if you are going to buy a pack and you want to use it, you can. You could also use a different Simsy creators code if you'd like to support them instead. I just encourage you to use somebody's code if you are gonna buy any Sims packs because that way someone makes a little bit of money off of it and EA makes a little bit less money off of it. And it's free for you because you were already going to buy the pack and you just happen to be also supporting a creator now while you do it. But anyway, do I need to reload the game for them to actually install? I don't know. I don't trust the Sims. Okay, here we go. Build something grand. Get inspired by the majesty of castles and build using gothic arches, stackable ornate windows, grand and staircases, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and gotta love a classic. Parapets, stained glass windows, arrow slits, and even a gargoyle are among the classical details that will make your manor magnificent. And then obviously also with the goth galore kit, you can be dark and distinct. <laughs> Variety isn't always about color. Sometimes it's about textures and embellishments. Add points of interest with mesh, belts, buckles, straps, and harnesses. Also goth on the go. Your sims will flirt with their dark sides in platform shoes and sleek silhouettes that are perfect for everyday wear parties or any occasion where they want to stand out. Okay, I say that we start with the build kit because that's what I'm most excited for and also most scared of. <laughs> my expectations are so high with the build kit that I'm a little bit nervous that my dreams are gonna be crushed. I actually started building a weird shell of a castle on this Von Haunt estate lot in Windenburg just so we could test this out a little bit better. It is by no means a good castle. I just wanted to have something that would work to help us test out these items a bit better. As we know, there isn't like any furniture to use. It's mostly things like foundations and friezes and all those fancy build features. So starting there with the foundation, this is that cornerstone castle foundation. It comes in a lot more swatches than I was expecting. Ooh, oh, that one is pretty. There's like some mossy clover stuff growing in it. So in total, it looks like we have quite a few clean variants and also a bunch of dirty ones as well that are covered in this like dark dirt. I don't like like that one. <laughs> this one is a little bit more orange than I would like, but I do like how we have some options here. It helps that we've got a couple different color variants. It does come in solid white and solid black, so you can fit it in quite easily, plus this bonus one with the pretty moss. So that should hopefully be useful for a lot of different styles of castle builds. This foundation is quite plain as well. It's like simple stone brick, so you could probably use this on like a, a cottage of sorts. I'm imagining like maybe the goth family gets a new foundation with this dark black brick. I, I could see this being a little bit more versatile than you might expect. I'm always trying to think of how to use these items in ways that it maybe wasn't intended for because not everybody's gonna build a castle like every day. So if you're gonna buy this, you wanna have uses for it outside of just, you know, one thing. It looks like we do have a staircase and and this stone staircase is one of the things that I was most excited about. I know that sounds kind of weird, but we don't really have a lot of stone staircases. We have a couple things like this, obviously even like the Star Wars pack has one, but this is quite useful, I think, for like general community lot building, like your library maybe might have a stone staircase. Any kind of build that has a sidewalk situation, I think you could get good use out of this for. This is like a good, solid, literally <laughs> type of staircase, so I could see myself using this a lot that might be my most used item from the kit. Staircase pricing is always very interesting to me. There's a huge discrepancy in them. Most of them are kind of cheap, like eight simoleons. And as you're going through here, all of a sudden it jumps up from like 15, 20 to 32, 35, 48. <laughs> the stairs get really expensive really fast. So these are actually on the cheaper end. So they should hopefully be pretty useful. There's two new fences. We have this heirloom handrail and it's kind of fancy. <laughs> this is like way cooler than I thought it was gonna be. I thought from the original picture of the goth family's mansion they did that this was like wooden and I was kind of worried about it, but it looks like it is stone. So it has all those same stone swatches. We don't have a lot of stone fences. We have a couple, but like this one obviously is a completely different vibe. <laughs> that barely counts. I'm picturing myself rebuilding Vlad's mansion from vampires with this stuff right now and getting kind of excited. This one also has a matching railing. So you can use that on the stairs. It costs 30 simoleons. So it's pretty pricey compared to a lot of other fences, which makes sense considering it is literally made of solid stone. And this is the battlement fence. And this one, this is weird. It has a very specific 
specific purpose, but this is what I was most excited about because this is what you can use to like really decorate your builds and then make some really cool detailing like this on your exteriors. Like all of a sudden, my really weird shape looks like a castle. Before you were looking at this thinking like, Kayla, what are you building? <laughs> this is kind of weird. And then I added this and all of a sudden it's like a million times better. You can see what I'm going for and you can actually tell that it's supposed to be a castle. Oh, now what is that doing? Are you kidding? Stop, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> this is not really helping us, is it? Please, I don't want you to become a room. Please, please don't do that. If you don't want that to happen, you can like move and drag stuff so it doesn't close anything off. Closing off is bad. Sometimes, no, 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 no. What are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that to me? If I build the wall, is it gonna do it again? Huh? Okay, Um, I don't know if this is specifically to blame the castle kit, but I guess in reality, I probably do want that to be closed off anyway. I guess realistically, I probably do want to have a foundation in here anyway. This is like a courtyard space, so it can be up to the same height as the rest of the building. <laughs> oh my god. Again, I don't think it's the kit's fault. This is this is just The Sims 4. You know about The Sims 4. You are used to The Sims 4 being like this. Okay, and then we have a freeze. This is the battlement freeze. Look at how cool that looks on there. So freezes can only be placed on medium wall height or taller, but if you really want to, you can hold shift and you can place it on short wall heights. Normally it wouldn't let you, it says it has to be taller, but you can kind of make it work however you want if you hold shift. Freezes in The Sims 4 are very glitchy <laughs> and very annoying. That is not the fault of this particular freeze, but that just is kind of how the freezes are. If you've ever used them, you're probably familiar with that. And then this obviously comes in all those same stone colors. So we have a few variants of like lightly colored brownstone. There's some gray. We've got a solid black. We also have a solid white white that you can use, and they're all kind of a stone texture on this freeze. Then there's also an exterior trim. The difference between trim and freezes is that freezes place on the top of a wall. So you can see it placed up here on top of the wall. Trim places on the bottom of a floor. It sounds kind of weird because if I put this here, it is on top of the wall, but what's actually happening is this is placing around the bottom of this fence, and it also is on top of that wall. I realize that sounds kind of weird, and it's real confusing when you place it here, and it looks like it's on top of the wall, but what's actually happening is this trim is placing at the bottom of the fence, which is why you can use trim on short wall height. So I'm gonna go through and add that onto all of the tops of these buildings. When I try and place it here, you get what I mean. I can't place it on this wall, but if I move up and try and place it there on the fence, all of a sudden it works. So again, seems kind of confusing, but that's just how the trims and freezes work in this game. I'm actually really, really liking that. I think that's super cool. I really like the detail on all all of these, there's like some interesting carving happening. And again, this has all those same swatches as the rest of the things do. Everything in this pack seems like it matches which is good, because if it didn't, that would be a disaster. <laughs> but it has all those same stone colors. We did also get one column. This is the compound column. I typically like to use columns to place them in the corners as like accent pieces of buildings like this. So I don't know, I might go around and place those like all on the edges. And then maybe on the inside here, we could get some kind of cool like decorative column stuff happening. Uh-oh, see freezes, they're buggy. I tried to tell you, <laughs> I tried to warn you. There could be a roof on top of this. I don't, I don't really know what I want it to look like yet. Shockingly, it looks like these columns come in all of the same swatches. You can see a bit better the difference between the plain one and the dirty one now. You can see how it has a lot of that dark dirt at the top on this column. I think that should match the wallpaper really well. Let's test that next. So there's only one wallpaper in this pack. It's the historic stone bricks and they match, oh, look at that with the foundation. That just ties everything together so well. Those match perfectly. Oh, I'm so glad. It's such a relief to have things in this game like actually match each other. Um weirdly, it looks like there's almost like a line in the middle of it where it's like slightly darker brick on the bottom and not in like a dirty way because this is the dirty brick swatch. Oh, there's like two kinds of dirty brick swatches. <gasps> Oh, look at that one. Oh my God, that's so pretty. That's my favorite one. That looks so good. Okay, but there's like a dirty brick swatch that has the darker brick at the top. So that kind of matches this darker column. So you can see what I'm talking about a bit better. I don't like the wallpaper as much as I thought I would, mostly because I think I'm failing to understand the textures on it. Why is there that like line down the middle? It's really noticeable. It's not as noticeable on the second floor, but it is still visible to me. 
but it's not as bad. How does it look when you delete the freezes? Okay, it does line up nicely together. Am I imagining that? I'm not, you can see it. It's different colors. I don't know how I feel about that. It doesn't look bad when it's all together though. Like it, it looks okay across the whole building. So I, I'm not really upset. I'm just kind of weirded out by that. And then again, this one comes in all the same colors. I like that they have a nice solid plain black and a plain white too. The plain white's not really white. It's kind of a light gray stone, but at least the black is solid black. There really are a bunch of really nice colors of this stone. It's making me kind of excited to build with the pack. We also have a single floor tile from here. It's these weathered stone pavers. And these are cool. We don't have anything like these checkered stone pavers. Oh my God, look at that one. I really like this mossy swatch. I really like how there's so many different variants. I can see myself using this a lot to make people's backyards. I could do this as like a nice paver for someone's back patio because it looks like a castle thing, but it could also really easily pass as like a regular patio paver if you needed it to. So, so far I'm thinking the stairs and this flooring are probably the most usable outside of very specific castle builds. We also have this gothic spandrel, which we could try and test out in here. What's going on? there. Excuse you, can I ask why it's doing that? Do any of you know why it's doing that? <laughs> the Sims 4 is Sims 4-ing. It's because of the freeze. When you have a freeze, the freeze makes the spandrel lower. I don't know if you can see this here, but the spandrel has to be below the freeze. So if I delete that freeze and then I put the spandrel back, it should stop doing that. Oh, or not. Is there a freeze inside? Oh my god. I told you, freezes are so buggy in this game. <laughs> it's the fault of the freeze. Not just this spandrel does that. Any spandrel would do that, even the base game ones would. Freezes are so annoying. They're so annoying to work with. It's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> but this is what that spandrel looks like. That is so cool. It also has a kind of cool mossy one. I love the idea of making like an abandoned, overgrown fairy castle with these swatches. It's making me want to try and do that right now. I'm really excited. <laughs> I might try and do that tomorrow for a YouTube video. There are two other decorative things. We have this eavesdropping llama. So this is kind of an interesting, weird castle detail that you can use. It's it's kind of a cool support that you can add in places. I like that it's a llama and it has a shield. That's very Sims in a good way. If you're well acquainted with keeping secrets from prying eyes, this wall sculpture is for you. Otherwise, take heed. This historic sculpture of an eavesdropping llama is known to listen in on your deepest, darkest secrets. Historians agree that mystery still surrounds this piece. <laughs> and then we also have this crest of yore, <laughs> like a wall crest, a finely carved stone plaque from the notable yore period. The artistry of this historic piece is unparalleled, and the crest bears unique symbols that represent an ideal of virtue of the castle's family. Display it proudly as a reminder of your family's honor and glory. And it's, I mean, this is kind of plain. Oh, freezer bunny. <gasps> Are you kidding? Why do only some of them have that swatch? That's cool. <laughs> Grilled cheese, gnome, freezer bunny. Is that like a flamingo, maybe? Huh, okay. Well, crest of yore. <laughs> <laughs> and then last, but certainly not least, what I've been most worried about are the doors and windows. So we have first this Earl's door. It's for short wall height. And that's kind of fancy. It's a wooden door with a cool stone archway surrounding it. Comes in all those same matching swatches, lots of dark wood colors. That could work nicely as both an interior and an exterior door for a big fancy castle like this. Oh my God, do I need tall wall height? Whoa, okay. So on medium wall height, we have the Earl's double door. It's the same, just, you know bigger. <laughs> it's a cool double door with all those same color swatches. I really like this one. I think that's cool. And then it also has a matching archway. So what I was kind of picturing is maybe having the archway on the outside. The arch is the same thing just without the door in the middle. So it'll have all the same colors. That one's 780 simoleons. They're pretty expensive, which makes sense because they're so big. And then there's a tall wall height door, which is even bigger and even fancier. <laughs> Look at this thing with like a really fancy column arch around it. That is cool. Imagine that as like Vlad's front door into his house. Come on. And this one is 1,740. Is that like the most expensive door out of all of them? It must be. That is so pricey. <laughs> and then lastly, we have this cool portcullis, like gate almost entryway. This impressive archway originally served as the well-guarded entrance to a castle's grounds. Now it only serves as a decorative reminder of days past. <laughs> I think that's really cool. I was kind of picturing for this castle that you'd have this sort of thing like along the 
outside wall and then like an actual door onto the interior of the building. I think that looks amazing. I really like that item. It's only 200 simoleons too, which is a huge price difference from this thing. I don't really know about that. <laughs> that seems like an oversight. And then we also have the windows from this pack. And in total, there are seven of them, which is a bit more than I was expecting. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. There's one tall wall height, big double wide window. I guess it's actually triple wide. It's, it's three tiles, right? Kind of a cool stained glass arch window. Whoa. Oh, there's clear glass. And then also a couple really cool stained glass swatches. For medium wall height, we also have this tall two wide arch. I'm confused by that because it's the same size as the tall wall height arch, but it's under the medium category. That one also has the same cool stained glass, but also some plain glass as well. I really like these. I think that looks amazing. And then for short wall height, we have a little teeny tiny, tiny window. We have these windows that they keep calling stackable. They keep trying to tell you, oh, you can stack them. Oh, you can use them to make the windows look bigger. <laughs> but we have these, there's like a small two tile wide one and then a taller two tile wide one. And then we also have this arched window that fits on short wall heights as well. These are nice. And there's a, a bigger variety of them than I was expecting. I was real worried about not having enough to finish an entire build, but actually this is kind of a, a decent size of them. I'm feeling better about the doors and windows of this pack than I did about the Courtyard Oasis kit. The only thing that I feel like I'm maybe missing is that I think I would like to have a roof texture. Obviously most of these are probably gonna have flat roofs. They're kind of going for this style of castle anyway, but I think a new roof texture might have been kind of interesting. And then maybe some like roof sculpture type stuff. This was the original concept art and you can see in this they have some flags. They do have a roof. They have a roof texture up there. They have some cool banners hanging here. So I think just a couple of additional decorative details like the banners, the flags, some sort of roof texture would have been nice additions. I do think that it's a bit smaller than I was expecting it to be as far as like item count goes, but I will acknowledge that the creation of like a new freeze is a bigger deal than making like a random chair item. So they're not really directly comparable in that way. So you can't really directly compare item counts in that way because no two items are the same that like different amounts of work goes into them. It just feels small, but I do think that you'll be able to successfully build a castle with this pack more so than I was expecting. I, I feel good about what can be done with this. And I was really worried about it. I kept talking about how I was scared it wasn't going to have enough windows to do a full build. I actually think it has enough windows to do a full build. It's more just the other stuff that is missing, but even then it's just a kit. And I would argue that a lot of the base game stuff could go decently well with this. You could totally use like this fancy old sofa. A lot of the more expensive base game furniture I think could pass for interior furnishings in the castle. And then if you have packs like vampires or get together, those would pair quite well with this as well. And that's also better than Courtyard Oasis because that one doesn't really match any of the other packs. Whereas I think that we have enough in the game right now to successfully build a castle with this. It's not as easy to build something with that other style. The Courtyard Oasis kit doesn't fit in as well with the other Sims 4 packs. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because it's good to have unique items. It just makes it a little bit harder to use. I keep comparing it to that pack because it's the only other build kit that has primarily build items. Here's an example of an interior, by the way. This is one of the pre-made styled rooms, obviously using all base game furniture with this kit. And I think it kind of works together quite nicely. They didn't use that much from the kit, but <laughs> they did use the kit in here. It kind of gives you an idea of how that stuff might fit together. And I think it works. So overall, I like this pack. I think I'm gonna have fun building with it. This is for a very specific type of Sims player though. If you are not interested in building, this pack is not for you. If I'm talking about freezes and you're listening to me and thinking, wait, what, what does that mean? This pack is definitely not for you. This is for people who really like building in The Sims and use The Sims as like a building creative outlet because you might enjoy building, but mostly only build houses for your Sims. And if that's the case, you probably won't get a lot of use out of this pack. You have to really want to build a castle for this pack to be worth it for you to buy. And just not everybody wants to build castles in The Sims 4. So for me, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this and I'm really excited to build with it, but you just might not care. And if that's the case, do not waste your money on it. Obviously only buy this if you're like really into the idea of building a castle. So I don't know, final thought is that I think I'm pleasantly surprised by what's in it, but I still kind of wish it had some more items just to feel as big as the other build kits are, but it is more complete than I was expecting it to be. And I know those two things sound weird to say at the same time, but <laughs> I really had low expectations. So I'm pleasantly surprised by what you can do with this. And I still
still just wish that you could do more. But that's sort of a problem with kits in general. I always wish that they had more <laughs> in them. Okay, now that we've seen the build kit, I want to go pop into cast to look at the new goth galore kit. I've actually seen a lot of discussion on Twitter about this kit not being goth and people describing it as like alt or punk instead. And then people argue back about how it is goth. And I, I just want to tell you now, look, I am not the kind of person who should weigh in on this discussion. <laughs> I do not know anything. This is not my area of expertise. All I know is that it has some interesting new clothes. So we're going to look at it from that perspective. I'm actually going to use Vlad for this. I don't know why. It just feels right to me today. <laughs> so I'm going to try and test out the new clothes with him. Please stop doing that. Oh, maybe I shouldn't use a vampire for this. They get so annoying with their constant hissing, but I'm, I'm going to push through. Okay. So for masculine frame sims, there are five shirts in total. We have this kind of cool jacket going on in the back. I like this like lacing detail that's happening and there's some zippers. They were not kidding about all of the textures <laughs> and there are more swatches than I was expecting with them talking about how you don't need swatches and color to make things cool. I was worried these were going to have like one swatch, but it looks like that is not the case. This little baby pastel pink edition is really nice. Plus with this color, you can actually see the detail a bit better. It's hard to like make out the details in black, but in light colors, you can see those textures more. And then we have this t-shirt that has some ripped sleeves on the undershirt. It's got like a skull on the front and it looks like some kind of interesting textures. I like this one with the rips and the red and blue underneath. There's kind of just a plain one. It looks like with a sheer sleeve underneath. This one's more of a mesh color. We've got another different kind of skull. We have this kind of cool pattern. There's a free freezer bunny, but like a dead freezer bunny. <laughs> this one's plain. We've got this kind of cute pastel one with the blue and purple and a pastel dead freezer bunny and a kind of nice reddish color with the skull. That's not a skull. That is Bone Hilda. I am so sorry that I tried to reduce her down to just being a skull. That is everyone's queen Bone Hilda. And I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize straight away. That is so wrong of me. Please, please forgive me. <laughs> the fact that we have not one, but two Bone Hilda swatches makes me love this shirt the best out of every Thing. Like nothing's gonna compare. We also have this shirt with kind of a cool belt detailing on it. It looks like most of these swatches, they're doing a bunch of different textures on the sleeve. So we have like the rips, we have the mesh. This one has some red detailing. There's like a dark blue. This one's red. This one has some red detailing. There's a dark blue, some more red. There's a pink and black one as well. I don't know if I love this pattern on any of these. That's not my favorite of the variants. And then we have this color as well. I don't really care for this shirt as much. It's not speaking to me like Bone Hilda did, but it's fine. I like the little ruffle sleeve that this one has. That's kind of cute. <laughs> but this one is kind of like a tank top. It's a, a button up, but the sleeves are ripped off. I think it's probably supposed to be ripped, but it looks like ruffles. Maybe it is ruffles. I don't know. I like it though. This one's cute. This is that one that was mainly in all of the teaser photos. We have this kind of cool jacket with the hood attached and we don't really have much like this. There's not a ton of shirts that have attached hoods, especially hoods that are up. So that's kind of fun to have. This reminds me of that outfit from Realm of Magic. This one, I'm talking about this shirt. This is just a hoodie. It's not anything fancy, but it's similar vibes because of the hood. Masculine Frame Sims also get three pairs of pants, it looks like. I like the little zippers on these and the attachment in the middle. I think that's kind of cool. There are also some kind of cool varieties of different patterns. Same stuff that all of the items have. They all have matching swatches. I'm going to put them in red because of the blood, I think. <laughs> then we have these skinnier pants with some kind of cool belt detailing on them. Again, same swatches for everything here. I'm really impressed by the baby pink. I just was not expecting that and I kind of love it. I think I just like Vlad and baby pink. He deserves it. And then we have these shorts also again in all those same matching swatches. We got two, we've got two new boots, two new pairs of shoes. Ooh, that one has like rainbow chrome on the middle. And then it comes in a bunch of plain solid colors as well. And these boots are like platforms. These are really cool. <laughs> they have all the same swatches, including that kind of cool rainbow swatch. Anytime The Sims does something kind of fun with like platforms, I must remind you that his height does not change, okay? His feet are actually like, ooh, look at the shadow of his creepy fingers. His feet are actually flat under there. They're just like skins over top of his feet. <laughs> So when I try and envision where his feet would be in these shoes, they're they're not on the platform. <laughs> but anyway, sorry, doesn't matter. It's, it's just a game. It's just the Sims 4. It makes no difference. We have one full body outfit. Ooh, 
I like the undershirt with the rips and the mesh that he's got going on. That's kind of cool. It's like a longer jacket. And then it has a couple swatches with some different variants of undershirt. This one has no rips in it. There's some more colors happening over here. I don't like this cut as much with the diagonal cutouts, but it is still cool. And then we have a couple other variations. I like that one better. I can't explain it. Maybe I just don't like the swirly pattern. Maybe it's just that. I keep saying that. Maybe it's maybe it's the pattern I don't like. <laughs> I don't know. There are two. Can you please hold your arm still? There are two bracelets here. We've got this one just kind of plain small bracelet. It comes in a bunch of different color swatches for us to use. I like that with the rainbow. <laughs> and then we also have these gloves and you can use them both at the same time. I was worried that they would try and count these gloves as bracelets and then you wouldn't be able to layer stuff, but it looks like you can. I was expecting these gloves to be counted as bracelets, but they're not. They're gloves, so you can have them both on. The texture on these is like completely flat. So all of the belt buckle detailing that you're seeing, that's like painted on. I don't know if that makes you feel weird. It makes me feel a bit weird that it's not like 3D. A lot of the other clothing does have the 3D buckles. You can see it a bit better here on his legs, but the gloves do not. So something to keep in mind. I don't know if it matters that much because it's just a pair of gloves, but anyway. We also have this set of ear piercings. We don't really get that many jewelry pieces in this game, so it's kind of fun to have some new options. These will obviously match all the metal from the other items in game. And the piercings are different on both sides. I quite like these. I like these a lot. And then we have this necklace as well. And again, we don't really have anything like this and we don't get a lot of jewelry. So I'm always kind of glad to have more items like this. There's no hats or anything, but there is a little bit of makeup. Only one of the new makeup pieces is classed as being for masculine frame sims, but there are three total. This is the first one. Oh my God. <laughs> Vlad actually looks kind of iconic with that. I kind of like it on him. This feels right. You know what I mean? So we have this eyeshadow and then we also have this one. I'll test this out on a feminine frame sim so you can see it a little bit better because sometimes the makeup doesn't fit masculine frame sims eyes. They don't do a very good job of making it work on both frames. Sometimes the shaping is off as you probably seen with other items of clothing too. And then there's this lipstick, which I don't know if Vlad can pull off that well, but that's a him problem. It's not the lipstick's problem. And the fun part about the makeup is that you can kind of customize it however you want with the sliders. So we have a lot more freedom with these to kind of fit what we need. I want to use Bella Goth real quick to test out the rest of the cast items. So feminine frame sims have six cast items, three of which are different from the masculine frame sims. First, we have this kind of cool shirt with a lot of mesh around it. Here's all the swatches on that one. Whoa, they all look so different. It's like the same shirt, but the swatches vary so much that it looks so different on each one of them because it's not just color. They're totally changing texture with the swatches. I like that a lot. That's a cool idea for them to be doing because you could have two sims wearing the same shirt and it does not look anything alike really at all. I don't don't love this swatch very much. <laughs> I don't like those two colors together. This one's kind of cool though. Ooh, that one has spiders on it. See, that's kind of fun. I'm kind of into that. And there's also pink, of course, because <laughs> everything comes in pink in this pack. We've got that same leather jacket, which thankfully looks like it fits her pretty well. We've got Bone Hilda's shirt again with all those same swatches. I really like the high neck and the corset vibes of this shirt. That's really cool. I don't love the pink swatch. <laughs> I don't like that shade of pink, I think is the problem. I do like the spiders. I was I wasn't expecting the spiders, but I think they're fun. We have that same jacket with the hood over it and all those same swatches. And then last, we also have this top, which has some really shocking differences between the swatches. Looks like a totally different shirt because some have sleeves and some don't. I'm really, really pleasantly surprised by that. I totally did not expect there to be so much variation in the swatches. I mean, that that is two completely different items. I think it's cool that they did that for us. I'm, I'm pretty happy about that one. Although you're gonna have to go through all of the colors because I don't know about you, but I'm gonna forget that there's like other variants when I'm just scrolling through cast and looking at all of the items in the menu. Okay, and then for pants, we've got five different items. We have these little shorts, it looks like. Kind of simple, come in a few different same swatches. Lots of spiders. Why don't the masculine frame sims get spider swatches? I didn't see any spiders for them. We do have those same skinnier pants that we looked at earlier. Are these, I didn't realize there was a skull belt buckle. <laughs> Vlad's shirt was covering it. That makes me like these pants even more. That's kind of cool. I like the skull belt. I'm happy about that. Okay, actually, these are my favorite pants now. <laughs> I like those. We also got a little skirt. This one, unfortunately, also has the painted on detail that I was talking about. Do you see how the belt buckle is completely flat? Like, you can't actually see the 3D belt aspect of it. It's weird because this part of the belt is not flat. If you scroll in real up close, you can kind of see... Move your arm, Bella. <laughs> you can kind of see how this is 3D, but this part at the top is not. I don't like it when they do that. I don't like it when there's flat things like 
like that. I think if anything, this part could have been flat and then this should have been 3D, but I don't know. It is nice that you can see the belt coming off the side if her hands weren't there, but you can kind of tell a bit more now that she's moved them. And then we also have those same shorts that we saw earlier as well. These are those shorts again. We've got the same boots for both masculine and feminine frame sims, same bracelet and same gloves for these sims as well. Although her shirt is kind of covering it, Bella move. <laughs> <laughs> they look exactly the same, obviously, on everybody because they're just a bracelet and gloves. We also have that same necklace and the same earrings, not that you can tell, but here are those earrings just so you can see them again. And last but not least, we have all of the makeup. So this is what the makeup looks like on Feminine Frame Sims. I kind of like this eyeshadow. I think it looks cool. I like how big it is as well because we don't really have too much that fits their eyes this way. Here is that lipstick again, which I must say, I think Bella pulls off a little bit better than Vlad does. <laughs> I like the red lips for her. She could totally wear those. And then this is that other eyeshadow. You could wear them together. You could wear them separate. Is that not in the eyeshadow category? I'm actually really impressed by that. Those are both, oh, okay. This one is face paint. That's why you can tile them together. It's face paint. So you could wear this and eyeliner and blush and eyeshadow because this is a face paint item. I'm glad that they did that because that means you can really layer stuff together. It makes this a little bit more usable. Here is the first of the styled looks if you wanted to see how these things might be paired together. Oh, it's also the only styled look. I like it though. I think it's cute. Here's the only styled look for masculine frame sims. Again, it's cute. I like it. Styled looks are always kind of fun to have because it helps you see how they imagine you putting these things together and it also makes it easier to dress other sims. Sometimes you want to give like a quick makeover to a random townie and it's nice to have some easy quick things you can just throw on them like this. I almost forgot to show you the full body outfits. Okay, there are two for feminine frame sims. So first we have this dress, which I like a lot actually. I think that's kind of cool. I like the fit of this dress with the neckline. It's a pretty simple dress. It has some different variants of little patterns and stuff on it, but overall it's not the most fancy dramatic thing. And then we also have the same full body outfit that the other Sims had with the long coat. And that is everything from the goth galore kit. Overall, I, I like this kit. It doesn't like stand out as my favorite kit of all time, but I also just don't really care about create a Sim stuff. It's pretty much exactly what I was expecting out of this kit. The only thing thing is that I thought we would get tattoos. This was the original concept art that we voted on and I really liked this spider web tattoo. It's kind of fun because you can see a few things that did actually get made like the pants with the belt buckle. This Sims outfit with the skirt and the shirt. We have a lot of things kind of similar to that. Again, this was just concept art. It was never like a fully fleshed out idea, but it is kind of cool to see this and then have it get turned into this here in game. I will use this pack. In fact, one of my Sims in my not so berry challenge on Twitch, I think I might give a makeover to update some of her outfits to have some of the new stuff. But like with any kit, it's such a personal preference thing. Like this might be so not your style and you might never get any use out of this. And then obviously it's not worth buying. But if you like this, this is not worse than any of the other cast kits. Pretty much all of the Creative Sim kits come with about that many items. This one's just underwear and it's got 24 items. That's the exact same size of this kit. And you might use this a lot more than the underwear kit. It really just comes down to how you like to dress your sims and, and what would be useful for you personally. It's hard to say that it's worth the money because that's so relative as well, but compared to the other kits, it, it's the same. They're all kind of the same there. This one is not better or worse than the others as far as value goes. They all have pretty much the exact same kind of an amount of content. I did see a lot of people complaining about how this was too similar to the grunge revival kit, and I gotta say, I do not agree with you <laughs> or understand that criticism at all. These are just not the same kind of fashion choices even remotely. When you look at these items and compare them more directly, you'll probably understand what I'm talking about, but it's a totally different style. And if to you they are the same, then just don't buy them. They're not for you, you know? You don't have to buy every kit if you're not gonna use it. There's no point in worrying about that. Well, hopefully this was helpful to you to kind of see everything and hear my thoughts on this stuff. I'd be curious to know which of these two kits you like better. I am obviously and no one is surprised by this, way more interested in the castle kit. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna be live on Twitch today playing with the castle kit and working on a new build. I'll post some builds here on YouTube this weekend too, but I'm gonna be live like right now on Twitch playing with it. So if you're gonna be around, I'll link it down below. And if you liked this video, I always show off any new Sims content we get. Anytime there's a new Sims pack, I am here talking about it. So if you're ever curious about new things, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next ones. With normal packs, I make like 
like more organized formal reviews, but with the kits I do more chatty ones like this. There's just not that much to like formally review with a kit because it's like just a couple of items and there's no gameplay. But anyway, on that note, I'm gonna go and I will catch you all tomorrow. Okay, bye everybody. When I was a kid, I used to write up pretend like castle stories and king and queen princess stories for my sims. So having a real life sims castle is very exciting to me.